Senator Dorgan has spoke out on the secrecy of the Federal Reserve System. There is no entity in the world that controls our lives more than the Federal Reserve System. What the Federal Reserve Board does, nobody knows what they're doing. We have a privately owned central bank system disguised as a government owned system. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. Half a trillion dollars and you don't know who got the money? Uh, the loan went to the, the loans go to the central banks. Who actually made that decision to hand out a trillion dollars that way? Half a trillion dollars. Who made that decision? The Federal Open Market Committee. All right. Well, the Constitution says no money shall be drawn from the Treasury but in consequence of appropriations made by law. This you money is not drawn from the Treasury. Is it safe to say that nobody in 1913 contemplated that your small little group of people would decide to hand out half a trillion dollars to foreigners? This, this, uh, this particular authority has been used um, numerous times over the years. The authority that Mr. Bernanke is referring to is the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. Congressman Charles Lindbergh said the following, This act establishes the most gigantic trust on earth. When the president signs this bill, the invisible government by the monetary power will be legalized. The people may not know it immediately, but the day of reckoning is only a few years removed. The worst legislative crime of the ages is perpetrated by this banking bill. After signing the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, President Woodrow Wilson said, I have unwittingly ruined my country. I'd like to sing you a song, and if you know the words, please sing along with me. <laughs> Sixteen trillion, and what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. Taxes and interest from shore to shore. The Federal Reserve owns the company store. <laughs> Thank you. It really is true, folks. If we don't understand that and we don't address that issue, all other issues become impossible to solve. We need help. And where are we going to get that help besides ourselves? This is a tough problem. Well, the Constitution contains the answers to all issues if we study the document. The Declaration of Independence gives us clues and answers as well. The signers of the Declaration all of them said that they could not have established this, the greatest country in 5,000 years, without the help of God, without the help of the, the divine hand of providence. And I say to my friends that don't believe in God, it's, ir it's irrelevant. Whether you believe in God or not does not change the truth, the fact that believing in Him works. Now, how do we interpret the Constitution? Thank you. There are four references to God in the Declaration of Independence, and there are two references to God in the Constitution. So how do we interpret the Constitution? The Declaration of Independence tells us how to do that. We hold these truths to be self-evident that we have unalienable rights from our Creator. For four and a half months, the signers of the Const for four and a half months, the signers of the Constitution deliberated and debated and fought over every word within the document and its connected definitions. And they still all signed on to Article 7. Article 7 tells us who the God of the Declaration of Independence is and who the God of the Constitution is and who the God of this country is. Those two words are there in Article 7 telling us who it is. Our Lord. The Ninth Amendment is the voice of God, in my opinion, telling us how to interpret the document. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. No construing the document in favor of federal government at the expense of the unalienable rights of the people. That is the voice of God. Now, what are we doing here today? Are we here to vote for our most favorite person to become a, a senator or a governor 
or a congressman, are we, or are we here to support the defenders of the Constitution? We all have an obligation to defend our liberties. The Constitution is the most valuable tool, the most valuable weapon in defending our liberties. If we open up the document and we read the Ninth Amendment, then we can understand Amendment 5. Amendment 13, involuntary servitude is against the law in every state. Amendment 5, you can't have your property taken from you. We're not just talking real estate and have it redistributed at your expense. We need, we need people in Washington reminding, of our, reminding our representatives that they have a contract. It is against the law to be liberal. It is called the oath of office. It is called the obligation, the implied oath to the Constitution of the United States. It is called thou shalt not steal. God bless you all. Thank you for all you do.